Talk podcast for Monday, September 19th. Welcome to this edition of E911 Talk with your host, Mark Fletcher, Pilot Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. Now, here's Fletch. This week on the E911 Talk podcast, I am privileged to have with me Vice President of Safety and Security with Telecommunication Systems, or TCS, and a good friend of mine, Bill Hughes. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the history of 911, the advances that have happened through the various iterations, and where we're going with next generation 911. Welcome, Bill. Thank you. When did 911 start? Let's let's start with the history lesson. The first 911 system started in 1967 in Haleyville, Alabama. It was a uh, small phone company that uh, decided they wanted to beat the big boys to the punch and implemented 911 in their city. It was the independent telephone company of Alabama, I believe. Now with that, basically we were talking about basic call delivery and no enhanced information. Enhanced 911 came around in the early 80s, if I'm not mistaken, and that was when we added caller ID to the stream, right? We added a a special caller ID that provided location information on the call. Until then, 911 was a benefit to the caller only. And what it did is it uh, made sure that you didn't have to have the list of telephone numbers for police, fire, ambulance, who uh, in many cases, uh, unless you happen to call them for some reason, you might find out that you had old information about where to call. And then you had to call them sequentially if you needed more than one agency. 911 dispatchers became a specialization, and then people were able to call one number and get all the help that they needed. However, the call taker would then have to find out precisely who was calling and where they were calling from. And the E911 system provided that information to the call taker. Well, now, and then, and that's kind of where your company is comes in, right? So TCS provides several services to the 911 industry, uh, one being network and, and the other being these database services, which are known as Alley databases, correct? We provide information that convert the cellular calls and voice over IP calls into the format that's used in the PSAPs. So that's a great point. So when cellular became popular, location discovery became problematic because the typical mechanisms that were used for regular landline telephony couldn't be used. There were stories that came out at the time when a cell phone call would be switched to an entirely different state because there was no information on where the caller was, where the cell site was, and so it would hit a switch and be sent over to a 911 call taker who would have no idea where the call was coming from. Now this was in the very early days of cellular, and there were some well-known publicized situations where entire agencies would gather their resources to try and identify where the caller was by sending multiple police cars out into the area, turn on their siren sequentially so that the caller could say, can't hear it, can't hear it, ah, now I can hear it. Now the mobility problem with enterprise voice over IP is again the problem that we're looking to deal with and hopefully next generation 911 is gonna deal with that problem. So how do you handle that today in your network? Right now, what happens today in many situations is that the PBX of the enterprise has an address and hopefully that address is meaningful when that caller dials 911. However, one of the benefits of voice over IP is that the caller can be in multiple locations and if they dial in on a VPN, they could be anywhere. So the big problem is, is how do I get the updated information into the existing PSAP infrastructure? And I'm not sure if that, if there's a really good way of doing it. There are a lot of band-aids that work there, but it's really about using next generation 911 and PitaFlow. And a lot of companies will ask, well, look, I've got this intelligent enterprise network. I've got SIP connectivity to my carriers. Can I start passing SIP enabled calls with PitaFlow as my E911 traffic? And when is a carrier going to come out? that can accept that to route me to any PSAP in the country. In my judgment, PITAFLOW is a, an acronym that is going to become very familiar to a lot of professionals in the 911 space. It has information about where the caller is, and then you can use existing TCS voice over IP to 911 technology to make sure that the location of that caller is used to route the call to the appropriate PSAP. So it's looking at the contextual data contained in the PIDA flow and then doing what we call geocoding that or establishing a location and then looking that up in the existing databases? That's correct. TCS does this 
thousands of times a day with our live wire service where we take voice over IP calls based upon their location and route them to the right PSAP. In the future, the Pitaflow information will do essentially the same thing. So now would an enterprise be able to connect directly into TCS or would they have to go through a, uh, a service of some type before that sits before you in the network? I don't know the answer to that question. Those are the best questions, Bill. <laughs> okay, let me see if I can answer it this way. You don't have the, to. <laughs> there are a number of service providers that we work with to provide this information. In some cases, our involvement is visible to the enterprise. In other cases, it's transparent. So really, the it would be fair to say that the enterprise telecom administrator needs to understand what's happening because it's very much like the old long distance days once deregulation hits. You know who you're writing the check to, but you really don't know who you're getting the service from. For the enterprises that want to make sure that they're providing the expected level of safety and security to their employees, they'll want to understand the methodology. Just because you're a good friend of mine, I'll put you on the spot. What's your earliest guess for next generation 911 being available to the general enterprise customer? Second quarter of 2012. Wow, that's not that far away. TCS is committed to the I3 standards. We believe that it will improve the safety and security of communities and the public at large, and we're committed to making it happen as fast as possible. Well, that's great. Once again, I appreciate you being on the podcast here today. You've been listening to the E911 Talk Podcast with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. E911 Talk is a weekly podcast available on sites like this, as well as iTunes, and is available free of charge. If you have any comments or questions, you can email Fletch at FletcherM at Avaya.com. That's Fletcher, the letter M, at Avaya.com. Be sure to listen in next week for more informative topics on E911.